Phones are important for checking emails, making calls, and sending texts, but most importantly, they allow you to rise up against your enemies in my favorite game, Clash of Legends. Who is the sponsor of today's video? No, they aren't sponsoring today's video? No. They should be, this is gonna be a good video. If we plan on recharging our phones from an off-grid electrical system, we need to know how much power that they will use on a day-to-day -day basis so that we can size our batteries and solar appropriately. And that's exactly what I'm going to teach you here in lesson number two of this electrical system sizing playlist. My name is Nate and welcome to the Explorus Life Mobile, Marine, and Off-Grid Electrical Academy. Now the methods for estimating power usage that I'm going to teach you today will work for many other devices like Bluetooth speakers, drones, cameras, and essentially anything else that has a battery in it and is powered by USB. So if you keep an open mind and think critically, you'll be able to apply this information to your own specific project. Last thing before we get started. I put some important information about this academy, some additional resources, and some prerequisite information related to this video down in the pinned comment below. So be sure to scroll down and check it out. Let's get started. How much power does a phone use? In lesson 2.1 of this academy, I showed you how to figure out how much power a coffee maker used to brew a pot of coffee and keep it warm for an hour by using one of these power meters. And after a little bit of testing, honestly, it doesn't work that good for determining how much power a phone uses, so we're gonna get rid of it. It just shows how much power is going into the phone while it's actively recharging, but when the battery was full and I was just sitting there using the phone, no power was flowing to operate the phone while the battery was full, which was admittedly not what I expected. And I also tested the same thing with the portable speaker just to be sure, and I had the same results. So I came up with a better and more predictable plan for power estimation, and here's what we're going to do. We're gonna figure out how big the battery is inside the device. We're gonna convert that to watt hours as necessary. We're going to figure out how many times per day that we're going to be recharging the device. And then we're going to multiply the device's battery size times the number of times that we recharge the battery per day. That's the plan and here's how it looks in real life. Now I have an iPhone 15 Pro. Who is the sponsor of today's video? Nothing still. Nope. And so the first thing I'm going to do is look on the phone or in the phone's settings to see if the watt hours or milliamp hours or battery voltage is listed. And I'm not finding anything in the settings and I'm sure it's printed on the actual battery inside of the phone, but since I can't really you know, get to it, <laughs> we just have to resort to looking it up. Google searches of iPhone 15 Pro battery capacity, iPhone 15 Pro watt hours, iPhone 15 Pro battery milliamp hours, and iPhone 15 Pro battery voltage should all get you what you need. Ideally, you'll be able to find a source that tells you how many watt hours the battery has in it, and if that's the case, we are finished, and we have our answer. In my case, I am finding a source claiming a 12.7 watt hour battery for my phone. Now, if I hadn't been able to find that, I would need the milliamp hours or the amp hours plus the battery voltage for my phone. This article says that the iPhone 15 Pro has a 3,274 milliamp hour battery. Now, converting this from milliamp hours to amp hours is as simple as moving the decimal three places to the left, dividing by 1,000, or Googling milliamp to amp hours and entering your values. From there, we found this article that says that iPhone batteries are about 3.6 volts, which means that we can use amp hours times volts equals watt hours to determine that 3.2 amp hours times 3.6 volts equals 11.52 watt hours, which is pretty close to the 12.7 watt hours listed earlier. Now, before we move on, I want to hear from you. After watching this video, I'd love for you to test out your own phone and put the results down in the video description below. Let me know what make and model of phone you're using, the battery size, and how many times per day you recharge it. I'm trying to build out a database of what kind of power usage various devices use, and teamwork makes the dream work here, so help me out and leave your results down in the comments below. How many times is a phone charged per day? 
Now that we know that our phone battery has 12.7 watt hours inside of it, we just need to know how many times per day we're going to recharge it. Personally, I pretty much always just recharge my phone at night while I'm sleeping, so it's ready to go in the morning, and I rarely have to recharge it throughout the day, but by the end of the day, it's fairly close to empty, 10 to 20% or so. For easy math, I'm just gonna say that I use the full battery every day, which means that I use 12.7 watt hours every day to keep my phone operational. If I had a device that I consistently only used to 50%, it's easy to just take that 12.7 watt hours and divide it by two. If I had a device I used in the morning, recharged it, then used it again in the evening, and then recharged it again overnight, that would be two charges per day. So I just multiply 12.7 watt hours by two. So in short, when trying to size an off-grid electrical system and I'm doing a power audit, I found it easiest just to figure out how many times I was recharging a device per day and multiply by its internal battery size. How does a phone battery compare to a house battery? Now in the context of recharging a phone from a larger off-grid battery bank, here's how that would look. 12.7 watt hours pulled from a 12 volt battery bank would be a loss of 1.06 amp hours or 1.06% being drawn from a 100 amp hour battery per charging cycle of the phone, not counting any kind of inverter efficiency losses. So very minimal power consumption here, but still worth noting when you're doing a power audit for an off-grid electrical system as these small, seemingly insignificant loads can really add up quickly, especially when you have multiple of them. Now you should have a pretty good idea of how to calculate the power used by a cell phone in a mobile, marine, or off-grid electrical system. And you can use these principles to figure out the power usage of many other items like Bluetooth speakers, drones, cameras, and more. And we're going to be referring back to this video later in the Academy when we talk about full power audits. So be sure to bookmark it for a future reference and come back to it if you need a refresher. Now, before we move over to the next lesson in this playlist, be sure to tell me how much power that you've measured your phone to use down in the comment section below so we can all learn from it. Now in the next lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to determine the power required for a desktop or laptop computer for those of you working remotely. So click up here to watch and I'll see you over there. To rise up against your enemies in my favorite gun <laughs> they allows you, allows you, I said it again, but most, <laughs> I'm all like geared up for this. <laughs>